here. So Otis, let's start with you yeah. uh, talking about uh, Mulroy first, shall we? The Shelby County DA who's been under a lot of fire really since he took office, but especially because it's been all the revolving door soft on crime accusations. But then he had said, floated the idea, because he really didn't come up with anything concrete, mm -hmm. that he was going to have a diversion plan for uh, those who are uh, felons of nonviolent crimes right. uh, who are arrested for a gun violation or a gun crime, uh, unlawful gun possession, right. uh, and that he took a lot of heat for that. Yeah. Uh, Cameron Sexton, the Speaker of the House, came into town again, calling him soft on crime. State Senator Brent Taylor from Collierville Needs also calling Steve Mulroy soft on crime. They've been the most vocal, but other Republicans too. In fact, Cameron Sexton was optimistic enough to say that he thinks one day we will turn Memphis red again, and I know that day is coming very soon. <laughs> to which you responded on our air last night, newsflash, Memphis will turn red when the rest of Tennessee turns blue. <laughs> and since neither of those will happen anytime soon, Sexton was merely giving his Republican audience a pep talk, disguised as wishful thinking, because you cannot trash this city one day, expel its duly elected leaders the next day, and think you are winning the hearts and minds of most voters. The floor is yours. And I stand by that. <laughs> okay. um, you, may, you, you said it correctly, especially when it relates to Mulroy, um, that uh, Republicans, with all due respect to my friend here, they've been hounding him ever since he beat Amy Wyrick back in 2020. And beat her soundly, we should point out. Absolutely, because the voters spoke. Uh, and, but the Republicans didn't like that at all. So they've been complaining about him. Um, I think if he did anything wrong, and he probably did here, he should not have had a press conference to tout this program about get, uh, coming up with diversion uh, for nonviolent, even though they were nonviolent felons, he didn't need to have a press conference to do that. That should have been an internal thing where he and his assistant prosecutors get together, and if they determine that a nonviolent felon, somebody who has a drug possession deep in the past, but may, st may have had a gun, may have been caught with a gun by a police officer, wasn't committing any other crimes. If that person was worthy of a diversion to keep him out of prison, they should have just decided that in-house. They didn't need to have a press conference because all it did was give people like Cameron Sexton and Brent Taylor more ammunition to go after him, and now they are trying to remove him well, from office. Well, Mulroy's whole motivation was a racial disparity right. uh, when it comes to arrests and incarceration specifically for that particular offense. Right. Then, this week, Mulroy drops this whole thing like a hot potato, <laughs> he uh, reading the handwriting on the wall, yeah. and said it wasn't going to really help the racial disparity issue that much anyway. That's right. What's your read on what's happened so far on this, Chris? It was a bad idea. Um, I, I think it's ironic that you hear from uh, the district attorney all the time that we need more gun laws, which I, I'm sympathetic to some of that, mm -hmm. but we need more gun laws from the state legislature. And then on uh, the other side of his mouth, he says, well, I, I won't enforce some of it. We need to have a no tolerance policy for gun crime in this community, period. And he does have broad prosecutorial discretion for individual cases, but coming out with this policy, it was a bad idea. It was a bad approach, and he's getting the necessary heat, and I'm glad he backed off. But this is not an isolated problem. I don't think this is a case of Republicans pounce or sour grapes. I think many people in this community, including people within the Democratic Party, are having serious buyer's remorse. I'm not asking, is Steve Mulroy working hard? He is. I'm not asking, is Steve Mulroy a good person? He is. I'm not asking, does he have good intentions? He does. I'm asking, is he doing a good job? And he's not. And we know that. We've, we have 40 criminal trials in a county of almost a million people last year. We have hundreds of murder cases that are backed up. We had this silly diversion proposal. We've had multiple issues. People see what's going on, and it's hurting our community, and things need to change immediately. Well, but all due respect, though, Chris, uh, you mentioned the 40 um, criminal trials. That went back to 2021. So uh, you can't blame all of that on You're right. Mulroy. You're right. It's I mean, not, Amy it's not Weirich was in office until September of 2022. So, I mean, I, I, I understand some of the criticism, but I think some of it is just going, you heaping too much on him when he 
Crime didn't just start in September of 2022. Crime has been a problem around here for a long time, uh, and he's had some very tough cases to deal with. The Cleotha Abstin case, uh, the Ezekiel Kelly case, and he's seeking the death penalty for those. So I, I just think that the criticism, while some of it might be merited, is too heavy-handed here. Reverend Whalem, let's bring you in on this uh, from Atlanta. What are, you th what are your thoughts? Well, I can't disagree with a lot of what Chris said. I certainly agree with that, with what Otis said, but I vehemently disagree with Chris saying that, suggesting that there aren't any personality politics and no pettiness on the parts of the uh, Republican leaders. Uh, I think there is a lot of pettiness and a lot of personality politics, and that can be true as well as the fact that sometimes it seems more recently that Steve is in over his head. I hope that's not true. Well, you know, Memphis is the blue blip on the Tennessee map. Uh, and given the comments from Cameron Sexton, you don't think there's a little bit of game playing there when he says, uh, we're going to make, we're going to turn Memphis I, red? I'm sure there is. There's politicians involved. <laughs> and, and, and to your point, Otis, this is not just the prosecutor. It's not just Steve's office. We've had problems with some of our judges. We've had problems with judicial commissioners. We don't even have enough cops in this town. So I don't want to keep all the blame on him. But I think he has a, he's a brilliant guy. He means well. He's a, a I think this is an opportunity for him to change course. We need to have a no tolerance policy for violent crime. We need to crack down on gun, on, on gun crime. We need to stop this revolving door. We had that issue the other day where the, the young man who was involved in the, in the cop shooting, um, it, you know, allegedly they were pushing for a really high bail and it came out that they, they didn't do much of anything. Uh, that's, that's an anecdote, but it's demonstrative of an overall problem. This is an opportunity to course correct. The people are demanding it. Obviously, politicians in Nashville are demanding it, and it can't come any sooner. In my well, and, and I'll let me take Cameron Sexton's side a little bit on this one. You and I were at that Whitehaven Town Hall meeting right. this week. Right. And it was 100% black audience. And the anger I felt in that room about crime mm -hmm. and not being, and they brought up the revolving door. And they brought up the lack of prosecutions, and they brought up people getting out. There might be an opportunity, you know, depending on turnout, depending on how much you you make that as a wedge issue. I don't know. I mean, yes, a long shot, but what do you think? Well, I, yeah, there was a lot of uh, anger and angst at that uh, Whitehaven um, town hall that we had the other night, um, but. If you're talking about the revolving door, to Chris's point, that's a judicial problem. That's the judicial commissioners and the general sessions court judges who are in charge of them. Uh, I don't think that that's a Steve Mulroy problem right there. Um, and Steve Morrow was elected for an eight-year term. Uh, and so if you, if you think we're stuck with uh, Wanda Habit, we're, we're stuck with him too. Because <laughs> I just don't see how this legislature is going to effectively remove him. He hasn't done anything that requires removal. He's not incompetent. That's, we just have a policy dispute true. here. And so let's, let's not go up. Be careful what you ask for here, because you could so, have removed Chris, Chris. Uh, a, a lot of Republicans in the past that you didn't do. So uh, let's be careful how you walk the Go side. ahead, Reverend. Yeah. So Chris, when we when we finish this taping, why don't you text Sexton and um, the other guy, Brent, and tell him to back off for a second. Just tell him to give Steve six months and revisit the whole issue later. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to have to do six months because they can't do anything until the legislature convenes anyway. And, and I think there's a lot of conversations happening behind the scenes. These, these gentlemen know each other at a personal level. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I think that's an opportunity to course correct. I'm told they're good friends. Yeah, yes. Uh, they, well, um, Senator Taylor and, and Mulroy, General Taylor. Mulroy yeah. served on the county commission together, so yeah, they know yeah. each other. And they, and they talk a lot. They talk. Yeah, mm. yeah, they do. All right, very good. You wouldn't know it by the rhetoric we've been hearing, but that's okay. <laughs> that's uh, 